to let it grow or to break it off and, and okay. That's a good question because we used some acrylic um, to make some tubes and stuff uh, in various creations of this. And that crystal grows and it is extremely strong. It will break, break acrylic glue, it will break acrylic, it will break super glue. Those crystals are very, very strong and they keep growing. So the thing to do is in these copper bowls, you can see um, that in these final designs, there's a lot less there and they're bigger bowls. And it gives you a lot of room for expansion. So when you start experimenting with these, leave room for expansion. What is the source of the copper bowls? Where would, where would one get one? Just type in copper bowls on the internet and you'll find a lot of different sources where to get them. Was that question again? Uh, no, it, it won't. It won't actually degrade because um, when when we go on break and you come up here, not the new one, but these old ones, if you just lightly touch them, or we didn't get them wet, it becomes like a glued surface. If you've ever taken Elmer's glue and just smeared it on paper, let it dry and pick it up, it's solid. So that's the thing, it, it doesn't degrade. Um, basically how you do it is you wanna put a little bit of alum in your bowl, once your bowl's prepped, and put the water in and give it a few minutes till it gets pasty and then you can kind of form it and shape it like you want. So once that's done, put your insulator in, a little bit more alum, give it some time to get pasty. So you want a good contact surface. If you noticed when John passed that piece of magnesium around, he had shaped it a little bit on the lathe, so it was the same shape as the bowl. The, the big thing you gotta remember here is surface area. The more surface contact you got, between your two dissimilar metals, the better the performance you're going to get out of it. Next question. Okay, the, the question was, um, when we heat the bowl, distinguish between the red copper and the black copper. That bowl had so much surface area that this burner didn't really have enough heat to cook it really black. So you want to get it really black if you can. And the best way to do it is using an electric, uh, one of these electric ones. You can do it with low pressure gas, being natural gas or propane. You'll have to do it a minimum of three times. And that's a dunking it into the borax rinsing it in cold water and rubbing it with your fingers and getting all that off there. Being mindful to wash your hands good. Good idea probably to wear some latex gloves or nitrile gloves or something like that. Um, the quickest way to do it though is with the electric versus the gas. And the reason that is, is because low pressure gas has so much moisture in it, um, it causes it to oxidize differently. So you really got to work at it that way. So if you got an electric one, that's the best way to do it. Um, I didn't try acetylene. Uh, acetylene, um, I would think it throws a, yeah, just a regular propane torch or natural gas um, works. Those are clean burning. Uh, Acetylene is not clean burning at all. And, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that. It's a very high temperature uh, that's made for melting metal quickly and then the oxygen blows it away. You, you can do that, 
but it won't work as well. So once you get it glowing red with the propane or natural gas, take it off and let it set for about three to four, maybe five seconds. It's a visual thing when you look at it because it will turn black as it cools off from the red. And then at that point, you dump it into your borax solution. <clears throat> Um, the question is, between the bowl and the magnesium, um, can you use too much alum and get too much distance in there? Uh, that's probably possible. You're still going to get your ionic, ionic transfer, um, but once again, it won't be as good. So you want to be mindful when you put these together. Um, like John said, your bowl shaped like this, shape your magnesium like that. Once again, Soak your alum until it becomes a paste so you can form it. Once you got it formed, don't mess with it, let it sit, and, and then go from there. Just just a thin layer. I mean, it's once again, like John said, it's, it's not a rocket science thing. It's um, kind of a common sense thing. Get them, get them kind of close. Don't try and do them quarter inch apart or something like that. Yeah, you, you don't have to keep adding alum water. You can just add whatever kind of water you want. I, I prefer using distilled water in the ones that aren't going outside um, just to keep them, uh, you know, keep contaminants and stuff out of there. That's one way to do it. But if you got it sitting open out here and you're in a dusty environment or something, you're getting contaminants in there anyways. You can cover it with a paper towel or something to keep some of that out. But what we're seeing with these in this configuration is they seem to keep working and working. No, the, the question was drilling holes through the magnesium uh, for surface area. What we mean by surface area is if you look at the copper bowl up, up there, those are two and a half inch, I think copper bowls are three inch. These are four or five inch. So what we mean by surface area is more material of each. And that's gonna help give you that little bit more amperage output is what it's for. It's not really gonna change your voltage because in this configuration, you only got one potential. It's like if you do zinc and carbon, uh, you're usually limited uh, anywhere from 9 tenths of a volt to 1.2, maybe 1.3. Um, in these, and with the carbon and magnesium, you'll be around 1.8 to 2.4 volts. So um, the surface area really won't change the potential, but what it does is allow for more current. The paper is merely an insulator. If you stick two dissimilar metals together, you're not gonna get anything. Um, the alum would keep them separated briefly, but if they short, what's going to happen is just like John showed, um, for those of you that can see this, um, it's just going to be basically shorting and it's what's going to happen. I'm just touching the two metals right there. So that's what's going to happen if you don't have that insulator. Have you tried a large one, say a tennis bowl or you know, a lot of surface area? Well, we have. Well, we have built some bigger ones and they do provide a lot more current. Um, the thing is, it, it just depends on what you want to do with them, experiment. Yeah, and, and like this one with the five LEDs, if you, um, when we come on break and you guys come by and look at these, you'll see that the coil I built in this one um, is quite a bit larger than the rest. And um, most of them we build around 40 to 45 feet using number 40 wire. Um, I built quite a few. Uh, 50 to 75 feet um, using number 30 and 31 wire as well. Yeah, yeah, because 
yeah the question